how's it going out there, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Cash, and this is Weekly Recap. What is Weekly Recap? I'm going to go over my week of operating a semi-truck in the United States. I'm leased to an 80-20 split carrier. I do not talk about the carrier. Sorry, go find your own deal. Uh, I'm not a recruiter, uh, just not my thing. And I'm going to go over that week. I'm going to talk about why I did the loads I do and all that good stuff. Um, let's get into it. I don't talk about a few things like uh, fixed costs, like truck payment, insurance, and taxes. Taxes are not fixed costs, but I don't talk about them. You figure all that out on your own. I'm not bragging. I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you how it goes of trying to give you one person's experience of being an owner-operator in case you want to be an owner-operator or Maybe you share this with someone you think wants to own a truck one day. I don't know. That's what it's out there. It's just information. Um, this was a pretty short week, so let's get into it. So this week, I started my week down in Georgia at the murder capital of the world for chickens. At the old chicken murder capital of the world. Picked up a load out of there. I actually had a load cancel on me out of there. Had a load from Georgia right back to Minnesota. That's why I went there. So uh, that was a bummer. Got there, unloaded, that load canceled. Got another load that night, same place, same everything, just wasn't coming back to Minnesota. That was the bummer of it. Everything else was the same, same weight, same temperature. Just this one went up into Illinois, where the other one was coming straight on back to Minnesota. Technically splitting it made an extra $100, but I don't care because it like, you know, I could have been home in two days instead of three days. Just saying. Uh, so let's talk about these loads. First load out of uh, Georgia, three empty miles. I was literally right down the road from the place I was delivering. And 765 on the loaded miles. That went up into Illinois, not quite Chicago, down off of like 57, I think it was. And uh, 40,000 pounds, 28 degrees. Yes, chicken, big old heavy load of chicken. And that load paid $1,500. So... It is what it is on chicken loads. And then out of uh, out of Chicago area, out of the metro area there, I snatched up a dry load. Yes, a rare dry load for me. Uh, 42,000 pounds, uh, 75 empty miles, 450 on the loaded miles, and uh, for a total of 525 miles, and that paid 800 bucks. Yes, this was probably the lowest rate per miles I've seen in trucking. This load, or these, uh, this weekend, this is really a weekend more than a week, but uh, this was three days of trucking. It started on Saturday, very early morning Saturday. Uh, trucked that load, and that delivered, um, let's see, picked up Saturday, delivered Monday morning, and then uh, Monday went and got unloaded Monday, set all day Monday, got a break in, picked up the dry load on Monday night, delivered it Tuesday morning into Minnesota. So three-day work week there. Keep that in mind when we get to the end. Um, so uh, that was the week, and this was from late July, the very end of July right here. So it's what it is, folks. Um, this, I will tell you, like the end of July, uh, the beginning of August was probably the worst I've seen trucking in a long time as far as uh, freight volumes, and brokers knew it. They were not willing to work with us on anything. That's why I did a dry load, because the reefer loads are basically paying the same price. And it's like, why am I going to keep your load cool when I can just go get a dry load and not have to spend that you know, $50 to $100 a day uh, keeping your load cool? So that's what we did. That was the two loads of the week right there. That's the whole weekend. I went home for a week after this. Deuces, baby. Uh, but I got more on that here in a minute, too. So let's go on going through the numbers, and then I got some stuff I want to talk about afterwards. Uh, $2,300 total for the week. $1,840, my 80%. Uh, $1,293, all miles. 78 of that was empty miles. $1,215, loaded miles for a 6%. 6% uh, deadhead there. So, nah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's get to that rate per mile. Ooh, come on now. Let's hear everybody talk about it. Let me a comment about it. $1.78 all miles. Woo wee. You won't turn your key for less than $3 a mile, but by God, I will. 
remember that. <laughs> uh, dollar forty-two my eighty percent, and a dollar eighty-nine per loaded mile. Let's go over them variable costs. Six oh seven I put in on diesel. One thirty on reefer fuel. Fifty on def fluids. Uh, Forty-two on tolls. Zero on parking. Fourteen on a cat scale. Total variable cost eight hundred and forty-three dollars. We bring over my eighteen forty. My 80%, we subtract out the 843, and it leaves $997 left to me for me to do what I have to do. So there it is, folks, uh, the reality of being an owner-operator. Now, by all means, um, whenever I do a weekly recap, I want to make some things clear here, okay? I'm not asking you what you make, okay? You're watching a video of what I make. Uh, if you want to leave a long-ass rambling comment telling me you make more than me selling oranges by the freeway or doing whatever, by all means, the YouTube algorithm loves that. So leave a long-ass comment for all I care. Uh, but I'm not trying to convince anyone to become an owner-operator here, okay? These numbers are just what they are. If they make you feel a certain kind of way, that's on you. I'm a firm believer of you control your emotions, okay? If something makes you feel a certain kind of way, it's because you let it make you feel a certain kind of way, okay? Now, I'm not talking like getting kicked in the balls. That hurts. A guy reading numbers on YouTube shouldn't hurt you. I'm just saying, just saying. So, um, in $997, it didn't affect my salary. I make a salary every week, a very good salary. It's what it is. Um, you know, I, I'm not swaying in the wind. I make a salary every week. When I have really good weeks, I don't care. It stays the same. When I have bad weeks, it stays the same. And God willing, I keep enough money to keep that salary going because it's a, it's where I need to be. And that's just part of being an owner-operator. Now, what I, what did I do when I got off here? I went to the house. I sat at the house for like six days, seven days, maybe, maybe more. I can't remember, but uh, I didn't call no one. I didn't ask no one. I went my ass to the house. And that is the main reason I am an owner operator. Okay. In my, in my opinion, a company driver should make more than an owner operator because you are answering to more people. It don't always work out like that, but I think it should. Because as a, that's the reason I stay an owner operator. It's not to make more money. It's not this. It's not that. You know, I had somebody leave me a 50 page comment the other day of, I make 100000 a year and I got benefits and you ain't even got health insurance and this, that. And that. Who said I don't have health insurance? You can buy health insurance. You don't have to get your health insurance through an employer. I think that ought to be illegal anyway. I can't get my car insurance through my employer, can I? You know, they only do that so the unions vote for certain people and make, you know, believe that voting matters. That's the only reason they do all that, okay? You can go buy health insurance with your own money. It's actually a tax write-off, you know. If you, my business, I don't actually pay for it. My business pays for my insurance. That's the way it works. But I good on you if you make a bunch of money. I ain't hating on nobody. If you drive truck, if you work hard and you make a bunch of money, life ought to be good to you because you work hard, okay? A lot of people get these weekly recaps caught up and it's me trying to tell you that being an owner-operator is the best way to be. I'm not that guy. If I make a dumb decision, I'll be the first one to get on here and tell you I made a dumb decision, you know, because my, my decisions are not always tied to my emotions, especially when it comes to business, okay? So... I do what's best for me, and that's what I recommend you do. You do what's best for you, okay? If you've got a suite set up and you want to share it, that's fine. I ain't mad at it. But uh, to try to convince me to become a company driver is, it's going to be tough because I took off, I think it was, I'd have to go back and look, but I think I took off three weeks in a 10-week period. And I don't tell nobody. I take the truck to the yard, I park it, and uh, sometimes I'll text and say, hey, I'll be back on, you know, whatever day. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> you know, I don't care. They don't care. So that's why I stay an owner-operator more than any reason. The flexible schedule, my youngest just started kindergarten the other day, 
Yeah, I took six days off, you know, first first week of school. I mean, you know, that to me, that's that's the of uh, being an owner operator. That's why I work more sometimes and less sometimes. It's so I can when I need those moments, I can have those moments. You know what I mean? Because let me tell you, uh, the first week of school, it was great putting him on the bus every morning, being there when he got off the bus to hear about the school and uh, the day and the making of the friends and all that. Like that was priceless. So that's why I remain an owner operator. Now, if you've got other reasons why you do your thing, I respect that. But in no way do I want y'all to take this as me trying to convince you that I've made the best decision for you. No. I've made the best decision for me. Just like hauling this freight around. You know, people say, oh, I wouldn't turn my truck key for $250 a mile. My first question, whenever someone says that, would you turn your key for $245 a mile? Uh, I mean, you said you just said you wouldn't turn it for $250 a mile, and now you're already rethinking it. See, I don't know. I don't say stuff like that. I haul freight in the market conditions. That's what I do. I'm in, I'm, in a, I'm in a segment of a market called long haul trucking, and I have to do what's available, okay? I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Uh, I've heard of plenty of wise people right now. I got their trucks sitting in a yard, and uh, they're not trucking right now. Respect on that. I've been taking a lot of time off here lately because the rates are kind of garbage. But at the same time, me personally, my logic, and you can say, oh, you're running the freight market. Call Oida. He's hauling cheap freight. I don't care. Again, let's circle back to I'm a grown-ass adult. I do what's best for me, and that's what I expect you to do. Do what's best for you. But when other people go around telling me how to run my business, that's when I got a problem with it. If you don't want to haul for 245 a mile because you've set in stone that you're not going to haul for 200 250 that's fine. That's fine. You do you. But for me, I will haul at these rates because I'm still profitable at these rates and I'm covering my cost and I'm still making profit. That's the key. Still making profit. I have very, very cheap fixed cost, very fuel efficient operation. And uh, I'm not one to go sit somewhere because here's my, here's my scenario I throw out for everybody that says, I won't haul for under a certain amount of money, okay? And this is my logic. I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm just saying this is how I look at it. Let's say I run down to wherever the hell it don't matter, Memphis, Tennessee. Let's say I end up in Memphis. Oh, there ain't no freight for two fifty a mile here. What am I gonna do? Well, I could get a I could get a short load that goes to Little Rock, um, you know, three hundred miles. Maybe that pays two fifty three bucks a mile. Um, but I'm not making a lot of money for the day. You know, I'm making like 600 bucks for the day or whatever, you know? So for me, I don't set things in stone like that because I feel like when you say I'm not going to do something, it's almost like the business and the, the, the universe will challenge you on it every time. So, um, you know, it's like, well, I'll just sit in Memphis until there is freight that's, you know, $3 a mile. How long are you going to sit there realistically? Would you sit there for three days, four days, five days, six days? Your fixed costs are adding up. And by the time you do take a load, and let's say you deadhead all the way to Chicago from Memphis to get a load that's three bucks a mile. Well, then what? What does it average out to? Not very good. And I average it out. I look at all miles. That's the most important metric to me, all miles. I'm not worried about, uh, loaded mile as much as I am all miles. That's just how I think about it. Uh, you do you, boo. That's one of my favorite sayings. I got to get that on a t-shirt. You do you, boo. Uh, but that's what it is, folks. That's how I look at it. Like I said, not trying to convince you in any way to do anything that's not right for you. I'm just giving you my logic and my ideas on it. That's what it is. Pretty good week, in my opinion. Not great, but hey, for a three-day week, got me home uh and that's what it is hope you enjoyed be sure to smash that like button become a subscriber if you uh, want to and uh, take care of each other out there now that's you can no no slacking on that take care of each other out there and remember people are more important than trucking
Hi, I want to talk to you real quick about the ES Advantage card. Do you need discounts at major truck stop chains? They got them. Do you need discount on shop rates at TA and Love? They got them. Tire discounts. They even got health insurance now. Click the link down below. Easy application. No credit check. Sign up. They give you a call back. They'll take all your information, and you'll be in the network.